Hi, Dr. Jennifer Marte here, and today I'm going to tell you about this Key Studios Smart Farm Kit. Uh, this is based off an ESP32, which is similar to an Arduino, except it's got Wi Fi. I also like that it's got triplets, it helps keep the wires separated. And once you've put it all together, it looks like this. This thing is jam packed with sensors. We can see them on all different sides of our smart farm. And I really like these colored inserts as well on the wood. Some of these sensors are oldies but goodies. So for example, we've got our fan up here. We've got an LED, we've got our servo, a buzzer, but there are also some new things in this kit as well, like this water level sensor over here and the soil moisture sensor just here. And now we've got a pump to help pump water around in addition to some other ones as well, like a solar panel and a flashing LED. What was my favorite part of this kit? Well, I liked all of the sensors. I liked how each one was introduced individually at first and then put together into an internet of things idea. So for example, this water level sensor here, if it gets too high, representing flooding, for example, uh, it will blink the LED, it will play a noise on the buzzer and the sound of the buzzer indicates how much water is over there, which I thought was a nice little addition. And it will then pump the water from this side to the other side where it will measure the soil moisture. So there are examples like this all the way through and I thought that was really well done. I also just like the way the kit looks. I mean, it looks well put together. It looks like it's a fairly quality wood. The wood was easy to take apart and put back together, which is different from what I found from the smart house. And I also liked, this was adaptable to what you wanted to make it. So for example, you could run it off of the Arduino IDE if you wanted, or you could run it off of scratch. And so I think that makes this accessible to a much wider population of people. Now, if there's one downside to this, it's kind of related to the sensors, it's the number of wires that are in here and how easy it is to get them mixed up. So I had to take the top off and on many times because the wires in the bottom uh, were tangling up with each other and especially making it hard to get this servo door to go. So eventually I had to tape some of the wires down. But that said, that's kind of a minor challenge for quite a good output in the end. So this is now my favorite kit that I've put together. Uh, the, my favorite previously been the smart house. So maybe not surprising that I also like the smart farm. Um, but this one has been my favorite so far. And I think there's something in here for everyone from the first time user who can follow through the instruction guide and learn about all of these sensors all the way to the expert who's going to put it together and think it looks nice and show it off to their friends. So I would definitely, definitely recommend buying one of these and having a go yourself. And now I'm going to show you some videos of those different sensors working. Here is the code where you press the button and make the LED on the back of the tree go on and off. So the button is just here and the LED is up here. So if I push the button once, the LED comes on. And if I push it again, the LED goes off. Here's the code for the photo cell. Uh, note that I've changed the spelling error, but it was consistent all the way through, so the code would have worked anyway. But um, what happens here is the photo resistor is reading in the value of the light and then turns on the LED if it's too dark. So here's the photoresistor and the LED. So if I cover it up, the LED comes on. And if I uncover it, the LED goes off. This is the code for the alarm system. And essentially there's a PIR sensor there. And if it notices the temperature change, then it makes the buzzer come on and it lights up this LED. So when it's got the red light on, uh, it means that it doesn't see anyone at the moment, but if I move closer to it, the red light goes off and the buzzer comes on and the LED comes on. Here's a bit of code that could be weather monitoring. So it's looking to see how much moisture is on the steam sensor and if it gets too high, it makes the buzzer go off. And so what I've got over here on the serial monitor is the steam value at the moment. The steam sensor is just here, and then if we get our finger a little bit wet and touch it, it makes a noise for the buzzer, and depending on how much moisture it senses, the buzzer sound is different. And we can see over here, we've made the numbers go up from relatively low to fairly high, and they start to come down on their own. We blow on it a little bit. 
Sometimes it'll come down. I think the moisture from blowing actually made it go up. You can see the sound changed when it went down under 2000. When it goes under 800, it goes off. I couldn't get the servo to work on the opening and closing of the feeding tray, so I took it apart to try to fix it. Uh, actually, it was working, so it must have been stuck on a wire, but this is what it looks like from the bottom, which most people probably never see. So I thought I would show it to you just so that you can understand what's going on. Okay, after much wire moving around, we finally have the trap door working. Uh, what I had to do was take the three wires that were close over here and tape them to the side of the feeding bucket so that they wouldn't keep getting in the way and then move this wire out of the way because I think it was catching on this side and then the servo wire as well looked like it was catching um, was tricky but now seems to be working just check every now and then that the servo isn't getting too hot because that's what mine was doing the temperature system in action. I've changed the codes so that the fan comes on if the temperature ever goes to 21. So at the moment it's at 20 uh, with the humidity being 60, so it's off. But if I blow on it or touch it with my hand, then I can make the temperature go up a bit. And then the fan will come on. Hopefully I can get my finger away fast enough. Yeah, and then it goes down to 20 and then the fan stops. But the fan running is actually increasing the heat. So uh, that's why it keeps going on and off. You can push each other. And where I changed that in the code was just here. Originally it said 25, but I've made it 21. Yeah. This is the code talking about soil humidity and it beeps a buzzer if the soil humidity goes below 200. This is the humidity sensor here. I've had limited success if I try on the outside edge, but if I go on the inside edge and here, sometimes I can get the buzzer to stop. Oh, that seems to work a lot better. What I've done that time was actually put uh, my finger in between the two prongs so that my finger is touching both of the prongs at the same time. If I was just touching one prong, that didn't seem to work well. Showing the water level sensor. It's on this side and works really well. So if I put my finger on there and my finger's a little bit wet, it goes up and if it gets above 2000, it makes the buzzer alarm. In this code, it tells us the soil humidity of this side, and it tells us the water level of this side, and it rings a buzzer for us, which is up here, if the humidity isn't enough. So if it sees enough of a water level, it will actually use the pump to bring water across. So. If I put a little bit of water on here, see this number has gone up. Let's give it some more water. Yeah, you can hear the pump. And you can actually see the red light of the relay coming on. This is showing the auto irrigation, this time with water in there. So we've got water in this side and we've got a wipe because um, I didn't want to put dirt and soil in there, um, but not much water on this side. So if we go ahead and plug this in and then upload the code. And you can see that the water is coming through now. On this side, you can see some of the bubbles, and it stopped because the soil humidity level is now high enough on this side. 
Here's the website that Project 11.2 makes when you've got the Wi-Fi connected to the website. Uh, and we can see that it's printing out various sensor information for us. And we can check that they're right. So, for example, if I put some water on the steam sensor, you can see that goes up. If I put it on the water level sensor, that goes up. And then if I put it on the soil humidity sensor, that goes up. And then there are more sensors down here. So if we click LED one time, then this LED light comes on. If we click it again, it goes off. If we click feeding, we can see that the, the food has opened up. Or we can close it, open it, close it. If we click watering, we can have the pump activate. I don't know if you heard it or not, but it's making clicking noises. And you can see down here, there's a, a red light going. And here's what happens if you click fan. So if you click it once, the fan comes on. And if you click it again, the fan goes off. Although I have found it can have a significant time lag in that. I've gotten the app to connect now. So here's my phone with all of that information. You can see the sensors are being read out here. And then there's various things down here. So for example, if I click the LED, the LED comes on. Click it again, it goes off. If we click watering, the pump is trying to go. If we pick feeding, then that opens or we can click it again to have it closed. We can have music. And we can also click this to get the fan to come on. Or click it again to get it to go off. Quite a nice little system here once you get it to upload. The problem I had was when you first download the app, there's an IP address that's already in here, uh, and all I did was change the last few digits, but actually there was an extra zero that was hiding before that 192 that was there originally. So make sure if yours also won't connect to go all the way over and delete that extra space, and then everything connects fine. Thank you for watching this review of the Smart Farm from Key Studio. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for listening and see you next time.